church this morning. It's lovely to see you. Uh, it's lovely to have you with us. To our visitors as well, nice to see you guys as well. Um, a few different things happening today, um, but as ever, let's start with prayer. Let's pray together. That's just a pass the contraband, so sorry about it. <laughs> Just uh, read Psalm 4. Psalm 4. Answer me when I call to you, O God, who declares me innocent. Free me from my troubles. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people ruin my reputation? How long will you make groundless accusations? How long will you continue your lies? You can be sure of this. The Lord has the Lord set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will answer when I call to him. Don't sin by letting anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. <coughs> Offer sacrifices in the right spirit and trust the Lord. Many people say, who will show us better times? Let your face smile upon us, Lord. You have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvests of grain and new wine. In peace I will lie down and sleep for you alone, O Lord, who will keep me safe. Amen. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Loving God, this morning we thank you for who you are, for all that you have done for us, for the peace that you bring, the fact that you know each of us individually. Indeed, you are the one who has saved us. And we rejoice and praise you for that this morning. And we pray this morning that you would join us once again in our gathering this morning. That you would be with us as we sing your praise, as we speak to you in prayer, as we open your word. Father, this morning be with Frank as he brings that word to us. In your name. Amen. Why don't you turn to the person who's next to you, behind you, in front of you, around you, and say good morning. Now, 
Uh, I just want to say thank you to all the ladies who have packed those boxes. Um, yesterday we collected a van and we've packed all of the boxes into the van. Now the van is crammed right to the roof. You couldn't slot anything in a, above the boxes. It's absolutely jam-packed. Uh, so all of the boxes, how many were there, Mary? 60? 64. 64. And an extra one that I picked up through the week. So 65 <coughs> boxes uh, are heading on their way. Um, so pray that they get there, pray that they get to the right people, that they'll be of use and a blessing to the Ukrainian refugees. So please do pray for that and pray that we get home safely as well. Um, also please do pray for uh, Jan and Marinella. They are just back uh, from a trip into uh, Ukraine, taking uh, the aid that they have managed to get into Ukraine, right into, right into the war zone. So please do continue to pray for them. <coughs> Please, please also pray, pray for Oleg uh, and Marina and Sasha, uh, the guys who are working with the Ukrainian refugees in Moldova. Um, I don't know if you've seen much of the news uh, over the last week or so. There's now drone uh, action happening in uh, Moldova. The Russians are trying to really put pressure on Moldova. Um, so please do pray for the guys who are there and working still in Moldova with Ukrainian refugees, but also with the poor uh, old opens that we met while we were over there. So pray, please pray for that work. I'm sure Frank will do that once I disappear. Um, but that would be very appreciated if you keep that up through the week. Um, we hope to be back on Thursday uh, as our time frame. So please pray for that. So back on Thursday so that we are back in time for the Friendship Club. Uh, the Friendship Club will uh, happen on Friday. It will be here in Pitmeen at the normal time. I'm needing a couple of suits. If, uh, thank you, Janice. Uh, if people could make a suit, just let me know. In fact, is there anybody else willing to make a suit? Because I'm going to be here after the service to let you know. Amanda. Right, great. So, uh, Amanda and Janice are going to make the suits. If you guys could play the teacher so that we can make sure that the suits are different, that would be much appreciated. And then I will see you all when you come to the Friendship Club on Friday. Uh, which brings us back round to Sunday again, and I'll definitely see you all on Sunday. A few other informations just in the passing. Um, you've all maybe now seen our worship questionnaire um, to see what you guys think worship is, what it's not, uh, and the way we can move it forward. So if you haven't filled in one of these, please do. Um, Bob's been really interested in looking through the responses to these, so please do um, fill one of those in and bring it back. Don't fill it in and leave it in your house because we can't read it from there. Uh, please bring it back to us uh, so that we can see what your views are. That would be much appreciated. Also, a date for the diary. As you know, um, Daniel has been inducted uh, as pastor at Lincoln Baptist Church uh, on the 22nd of April. Now, there's a wee poster that the Lincoln guys have produced. There's one of the notice board in the cafe, so check that out. Um, but they would like to invite... All of us, I'm sure that we get shot. we all turned up, but uh, they would like to invite you to that induction um, for Daniel on the 22nd of April. The service starts at 1 o'clock. It's a long way, so Daniel's not expecting you all to go, so please don't worry about that. There will, however, be a live link and it will be recorded so you'll be able to catch up uh, on that service. If you do want to go down, please let me know uh, so that we can make sure that there's provision there uh, for us. The folk in Lincoln have a open their homes, so if you need accommodation, please let me know. You'll have to do that by email or text or tweet or here. Um, but let me know and we'll get the, let the Lincoln guys know so that they can make accommodation available to you. So if you would like to go, there is the invitation there. It's a very warm invitation. Uh, so if you would like to go, please do so, but let me know so that we can just arrange things. Grand. Also, uh, we are about to do a new rota for the uh, teas and coffees. So if your name is not on the current rota but you would like it to be, then please speak to Amanda. Um, if it is on the current rota and you would like it not to be, also please speak to Amanda and we'll get a new rota done uh, for next week for you. I think that might be it. No? No advance on that? Grand. Happy days. Well, I am going to hand over to Frank, who's going to take the rest of our service, and we are going to sing our next hymn, our first hymn, should I say, which is Our God is a Great Big God. If you would like to do the actions, bash on. <laughs> Let's stand and sing.
I think that people that did the actions the last time they did this should volunteer from you. Yeah. Yeah. Who was up the last time? Oh, well, thank you. Who volunteered Well, let's get following. Anybody that knows the actions to this one? Oh, there was a whole line up there. I know, it was the last time. All right, that will be to do. All right, so just join in. Here we go. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God.
Yeah. Right, let's start again from that. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth, and therefore uncircumcised, called that by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship of Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made two groups one and has destroyed the barrier of the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both them to God through the cross which, on which he was put to death by their hostility. He came and preached to peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of God's household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together. To become a dwelling place in which God lives by His Spirit. And we thank God for the reading of His Word. We are very privileged to be able to do that. I'm going to save, I've got another reading, I'm going to save that little reading for a little bit later. So, can we sing then? And we're singing in Heavenly Armour. Sure. The the, the there, there are two songs that we're doing this morning that uh, we haven't done since before COVID. Uh, so I'm aware that there's quite a few of you that will have either forgotten these or uh, never have heard them at all in the first place. So what we're going to do here is just sing you a verse and a chorus of this one and uh, then we'll get you to stand and join them. Okay? They're not difficult songs but it's not fair to ask you to just do them off the bat. Here we go. <coughs> Heavenly armor will be left of the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon has fashioned against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, our champion, the Lord. We sing glory, honor, our champion, the Lord. Okay, let's stand and have a go at this. Okay, yeah, we've got a little problem here. Let's do the whole intro. I'm going to do it. Just join in. Make up your own words. Heavenly armor, we're going to do it now. The battle belongs to the Lord. Power of darkness comes in like a flood. The battle will be won. 
the Holy Spirit convinces us that we are the children of God and have that right in Jesus. But children belong in families. And God in his mercy has put you and I together here. I've said before that perhaps you suspect that you're here because this is where you chose to come as opposed to going anywhere else. I beg to differ. You're here because God has chosen this place for you to be, not just today, but to have this as your spiritual home. Now, God, you understand the world better than we do, you know us better, and sometimes families are not the best places to be at times. But God has put you in this church for our good and for your good. This Ephesian passage is great because it talks about we were, and this is, I can hardly conceive this as a Christian now, but we were separated from Christ, excluded from the citizenship of Israel, and all, from all the things that God had for his people. We were foreigners to the promises, we had no right to them, and listen to this, and without hope, and without God in the world. And then God sent Jesus. Jesus taught, Jesus healed, Jesus did marvellous things, said incredible things, love your enemies, love your neighbours as yourself. But he came to die, and it took, uh, we're told in this passage that all of us who were far away, with no rights, and without hope, the blood of Jesus has brought us near. And he's brought us into church because this, this passage is great. It says that again, by Jesus dying, what he did was he took two groups and made them one. He took two versions of humanity, those with hope, and because they were God's chosen people, and those without, and he's made them one. Made them one. That's Ephesians 2.15. He set aside in his flesh the law and commands and regulations and he created in himself one new humanity out of two. Thus making church. Making peace. He made the church because the two humanities, we don't go to the synagogue, we don't go to uh, church, we don't go to the temple. People were able to worship God. Remember that thing that Jesus said to the, the woman at the well, there will come a time when folks will worship God, not in a place like the temple, but in spirit and in truth. So in actual fact, although our friends are now on their way down to Harwich and um, over eventually to Romania, they're actually going to meet with the church in that place because the church is the gathering of the people of God. Now the, one, of the, one of the very first il illustrations we get of that is actually when Peter is taken and is about to be put to death. And you know that when Achilles escape, when the angel comes, starts from the shoulder, he walks out the open gates, he gets to the house where the church is meeting <laughs> and they won't let him in. <laughs> Because he's in prison and they think it's a ghost. You know, that's, that must be quite a clear meaning. But there we, what we get is that the people were meeting together in somebody's house. That was a church. And they were praying together. So, but the first and foremost thing is we are a group of people meeting together in the name of God under the leadership of Jesus and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I'm quite good, glad that the Baptist Church has written that in one of their, their principles, that you know every church has a right to govern itself, and it's a group of believers who are, have Jesus at their head, and they make up their minds about how they're going to govern the church under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So God's not made this kind of institution and said, right, folks, you're saved, you're into this thing, you're part of church, no Jews, no Greeks, no foreigners, nothing, you're all one in Christ and walked off and left us. 
and has not happened. Whose church is it? We'll be looking at this next week. Jesus said, I will build my church, not your church, not our church, not their church. I'll build my church. So, let's see, we keep our head around this. We're a group of people who love God and are meeting to honour him and his son Jesus. We're not meeting under all our own rules, but we're governed by the scriptures, we're guided by Jesus, and we're guided by the Holy Spirit, who is with us. Right? Let's see what else this Ephesians thing say. Yeah, here's an interesting bit. For through Jesus, we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. So, not only are there no Jews and um, no Gentiles as far as God's concerned, but those who know and trust and love the Lord Jesus who meet as church, but we also, no Jews, no Greeks, no Gentiles, we all have access to the Father through Jesus. Again, you can have access to the Father at home. You can talk to God in the car. I prayed with Christine in the way up in the car and she said, I will not close my eyes. But uh, you can have access to the Father anyway. But one of the most amazing places to have access to the Father is jointly with other believers. Now, you would still be a Christian if you stayed at home. But the Bible advises us that that's not a good thing. God put us together as a family, as his household. And therefore, we should be meeting as family and as his household. So let, let's look at what we've got so far. We're not excluded any longer. Christ died, we are now on good terms with God because of the work of Jesus and the shedding of his blood. We've been brought together from all different races, nationalities, and all the rest of it. And in Christ, we are one family who has access to the one God. And all that is confirmed that if a group of people have access to the Father, that's church. If we're made one body, that's church. If there's no more fighting and arguing, I hope I'm right, but that's church. <laughs> Let me move on a, a little bit as well. Let me move to the, the second reading I had. I'm just going to read a little of it. Uh, the second reading I was looking at was in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 12. And it talks, of, it's a passage that most of you will know reasonably well. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but not has many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. We're all different folks. We all have different skills. We all have different looks. We all have different um, talents and gifts given by God. But we're one body. That's also called church. Church is the body of Christ. <coughs> For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as from one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. And here's the official bit. So that there should be no division in the body, that the parts should have equal concern for one another. So church is also a place where you get looked after. You may be the one that needs looking after and helped and guided and, and loved at times. There will be your brothers and sisters who will need it from you from time to time. And that's the other reason for put, not absenting yourself from being here. How can we support each other from a distance? Yet yeah, Zoom's great. Because I have never yet had Zoom leap out and give me a hug when I've needed it. Yeah. Tactile zoom. Yeah, there you are. There's a gap in the market for isn't it? But do you understand what I'm saying? We're part of the one body. 
we need to know that. We need to support each other. The Bible tells us so. And yet, let me look at this bit. There should be no division in the body. It's a wonderful idea. No. I'm, I'm not going to be too flippant, but I can still remember somebody telling me once that uh, a very well-known Indian politician was asked what he thought of Europe, uh, European civilization, and he said it was a great idea, but it probably wouldn't work. I think that was Gandhi. Well, God's intent for you and I is there should be no division in the church. But unfortunately, the church is made up of people. I used to say when I was a school teacher that a teacher, teaching would be great if there weren't any kids. In service days were fantastic. You got a huge amount of work done. But I was meant to be a teacher. And sometimes we feel in church that oh, it can be so difficult for some people. And sometimes I will not bother any longer. That's not the case. If there's division, we fix it. We need to be gentle. One of my favourite bits on an old calendar we have at home is, Lord, make my words tender. Because I may have to eat them tomorrow. <laughs> and yet we can be so unkind at times, can't we? There should be no division. Because what God has brought together, and I know it's usually used for weddings, nobody should spot a son of there should be no division. Let me finish. Well, I'm not quite finished, but I'm going to finish the high note. Let me look at where folks were to wrong. Corinthians is uh, an interesting book. In fact, so interesting, it's two. There was so much to be dealt with. And yet it begins, like all other letters, to the church in Corinth, loved by Christ, and blessed. It talks, the introductions, it recognises Corinth as a proper church. God at its head, head Christ, the, the chief foundation, the Holy Spirit, the main guidance, and the fact that all of us have been forgiven by Christ and put into the church together for our good and for each other. And yet Corinth get it absolutely wrong like other churches do. There should be no division. Let me give you a, a quick reminder of the first one because it's very relevant because the, we wouldn't have the words of the institution properly um, for our Lord's Supper if it weren't for the mess up that Corinth made. Okay, and yes, I know that Jesus in the night he was betrayed and introduced the beast, but the words that we use quite often come from Corinthians chapter 11. And that's after Paul says, I might congratulate you for the way you have the Lord's Supper. No, I am not. He says, because I've heard that when you get together, some of you get out your big picnic baskets and all your wine and your chicken legs and all the other stuff that you're eating and you sit down and you get, well, I suppose in Scotland we say get tore in. That's not a biblical one, you'll not find it anywhere. He said there are other folks, and you're meant to meet for the Lord's Supper, who have absolutely nothing and are sitting watching you. How is that a church with no division? You should be sharing. You don't think you who, don't have, who have a lot should be given to the folks who don't have anything. Then you are eating the Lord's Supper. There shouldn't be a division. Christ reconciled you to God, you're reconciled to each other. You get on, that means you get on with each other now. There's peace between you. And yet, you're making a big division over one of the focal points of your gathering together as church. When you meet for God, you meet for breaking the bread. It's one of the things that you do. And yet, you've managed to mess up. That's not good. Now, that's division. And the answer is, stop. If you want to eat like that, have you got a house to stay in? Just stay at home and eat if that's what you want to do. If you're not going to respect the body of God, don't bother coming to the body. If 
if all you're going to do is mess it up. Now that's, now that's brilliant because we end up getting a very strong instruction about what we do week in, week out when we come to remember the Lord. There's another bit. Um, that I'm not going to take the other bit from Corinthians. I'm going to, I'm going to jump forward to James. Because James has got another bit that's really interesting about church. My brothers and sisters says James in chapter 2, verse 1. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus, Christ doesn't show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes and a poor man in filthy old clothes comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you. And you say to the poor man, you just stand there or in fact you sit at my feet. Have you not discriminated amongst yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? There should no, be no division in the church. And James is saying, and you've discriminated. That means you've divided up in your head already who's more suitable than anybody else. I don't read in our Ephesians passage that Jesus chose the folks who shop in Marks and Spencers. Sorry, Eric, there are other shops. But I don't read that. I don't read anywhere that the person that's dressed better than the other person is more fit to be allowed to worship or to be a member of a church. And yet, even today, we sometimes do that, don't we? We look at folk who are not as well dressed and not as comforted and often not as blessed with the world's goods and we make assumptions. We make assumptions. We judge. That ought not to be what is church meant to be. What is a church? A church is the body of believers who was all saved by one God through one Lord Jesus and put in to the church. They are, we do not decide on the basis of how somebody looks or even how they may talk. We'll look a bit more about this uh, next week. Um, but I want to finish on a high note. The Galatians. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. What does that mean? Church. Yes? If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That means you're all saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus and your church. And it's, it's quite wonderful. One of the most amazing things that Christine and I experienced was many, many years ago, travelling at... I'm sorry, dropping games, but we were travelling across the Sea of Galilee, as you do. And it was a, a nice, calm day, and we got on the boat, and there was a, a chap, we went up on the top with the two boys. One of them was only four, and the other was a bloody because he was only six months. But we got chatting to the chap on the top of the boat. And I immediately said, you'll be Christians then. I hadn't said so. But the conversation that he had and we had, and that something almost intangible, his spirit being the Lord's, and ours being of God and Jesus, it was a connection. Never met a guy before or since. Don't even know what country he came from. But that was, that was part of church, on that boat, crossing that water. What's the connection? It's all, like the Sunday school answer, it's always Jesus. We'll continue next week to have a little look at, um, not what is church, but how does church work. Thank you for listening. And may the Lord bless us in what we've heard.
I'd like to take the opportunity just now before we, we move on just to pray. Our God and our Heavenly Father, thank you for who you have made us, for the redemption that you've given us, for the church you've placed us in, for the friends and family you have given us. And Father, we, we think too as uh, our leaders are travelling as Dave and, and Danny have, are moving down towards England and further. Father, we just bless, ask for your blessing on them as they travel. And as they meet up with Eon and Marlene, we ask that they may know that the church is caring for them. Not just ourselves, but they are in the hands of God and therefore in the hands of the whole church worldwide. So Father, we ask for a blessing on Dave, Danny, and on those who will receive the gifts. Father, we ask that you take our thanks for being able to put together the stuff we have. We thank you you've given us enough and to spare. Father, we, we see as you've put us into your family, your household, into your church, that in that you have blessed us hugely. Father, we ask that you would help us to build one another and the church up under your guidance. Father, thus we pray in the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we're going to <coughs> Sorry, Bob, I haven't kept you standing at the door that long. No. <laughs> See semantics, eh? <laughs> right, thank you. <coughs> See the cross, we're
announcement to play a meditation bit for Jesus Be the Center. I was asked uh, for a radio interview just a couple of days ago what my favourite hymn was. So, thank you. to give thanks. So let's just do that. Our God and our Heavenly Father, when we think of the mess we've made of our lives, the mess that we as human beings have made of our world and of our relationships and of our families and of so many things, we are amazed that you have anything to do with us at all. And yet we bless you that your word tells us that at just the right time, when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We cannot say thanks, that would be enough for this. But we do come and we give you our love, our blessing, our appreciation of all that you've done. You didn't leave anything undone that needed to be done to save us and to give us assurance and a home and a hope for the future. So we thank you that the Lord Jesus did 
give his life, shed his blood, that he showed the ultimate love, laying down his life for his friends, even when we were still enemies. Father, we thank you for the drawing near that Christ has accomplished, that he's brought us all to be one in him. None of us could have saved ourselves or saved each other. It needed the Lord Jesus. So we bless you for his unspeakable gift, his blood and his body broken. Father, we ask that we might appreciate what's done and as we take the bread and we take the wine, we ask that you would help us to respect not only the Lord, but each other in communion. This we pray in Jesus' name. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread from the table, he broke it, he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and told them to eat it. He also took afterwards a, a cup, then wine on the table, Passover, a different Passover. This is not wine, this is not Passover wine. This is my blood which is shed for you. So we take a symbol of Jesus' blood. We drink it. Because it's for all of us. So let's come remember us. Can I ask this side, please, to come out? Help yourself if you need it. One of the local cups. You're at liberty to take one. Let's.
case you've forgotten, I do know that today is mother. Not insignificant because when I was looking at it and I informed my Daniel seven years ago that Mother's Day is about mothering Sunday and it is about going back to worship in your mother church, the church you become a Christian in. It's not my tradition, I don't think, but so I'm told so. <coughs> I'm off. <laughs> I'm always off. Anyway. Mother's Day is today, and if tradition does exist, I think it does here. I believe that Jody may have gifts on the way out for anybody. If he doesn't, I'll phone up Dave and tell him. <laughs> okay, so if, a, if, you're a, if you're a mother, you can pick up a gift. You may even be about to proxy pick up Richard if you know any more. Mm -hmm. Okay, just when you're looking at me then. Okay, so let's uh, continue in worship then. We're going to remind ourselves that Jesus is the centre, that God's in charge, our God is an awesome God. This is uh, another one of the ones that we uh, haven't done for a long time. So just let me sing through the first verse and chorus and then we'll get you to join in. Sky was stars in the void of the night power God is an awesome God. He spoke to the dark and created the light our God is an awesome God. Although his voice spoke all creation, listen now for still small ones. Whatever you face, you better be believing our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever. We go back to the first slave, please, God. When the sky was stars and the void of the night, our God is an awesome God. He spoke in the dark and created the light, our God is an awesome God. Although His voice spoke all creation, listen now, for still small ones. Whatever you face, you can never be believing our God.
Hugh and Nicky. The Lord turned his face towards you and give you peace and go to peace.